This is the chapter review for physical science, eighth grade, chapter one, atoms and elements. All right, the very first thing you need to know is that in an atom, there is a nucleus, and this would be our nucleus. Within that nucleus, there are protons, as well as neutrons, Outside of that uh, nucleus are the electrons, and they are orbiting outside out here. There's a lot of space in between the electrons and the, and the nucleus. A lot more than is even being shown here. And they are rotating around the nucleus of the atom. Remember that the electrons have a negative charge. Our neutrons have no charge. And our protons have a positive charge. All right, the very next thing we wanna talk about is the elements as they appear on the periodic table and what that would look like. So let's create our element here, and we're going to go ahead and go with um, good old hydrogen, which is, remember this, is the most common element on Earth. Okay, now hydrogen is number one, so we're going to stick the number one up here. This is its atomic number. And this is also the number of protons. Remember that all atoms of a specific element have the same number of protons. While they may have the same number of protons, they may have a different number of neutrons. In this case, the, if the number of neutrons differs, it is still the same element. It's just called an isotope because it is a different number of neutrons. Now the next item is the atomic mass, an atomic mass, which could be shown up in this area or it could be down here, just depends on which periodic table you're looking at. That atomic mass is figured by the number of protons and the average number of neutrons All right, so isotopes, I want to give you an example. So if I were to look at a nitrogen element, and it is nitrogen 16, what I can do to find the number of neutrons in here is I can take nitrogen, which is element number 7. So I'm going to take that 16 minus its atomic number 7, and I understand that this element, nitrogen 16, has nine neutrons. One other item of note when you're talking about an element, um, when we're figuring out atomic mass, is that the electrons are not considered in the atomic mass. The weight of an electron is so small that they're not even considered when figuring out atomic mass. Now the periodic table of elements is, as we know, a very detailed way to view elements. Um, and so what we need to know is how to read the table of elements. One of those things to know is groups versus periods. Remember groups are going down the periodic table. So that would be groups one through 18 is listed across. And periods are one through seven going from left to right. Groups have similar characteristics from within them. So all of group 18 are our noble gases. All of group 1 are alkali metals. Group 2, alkaline earth metals. Within periods, each element adds one proton to its nucleus, and they have a wide range of chemical properties from left to right. Elements on the left side of the periodic table, they 
can form positive ions easily. Now, positive ions means that they will lose electrons, causing them to have a positive charge. Remember, an ion is an element that has lost or gained electrons. Certain elements on the periodic table are known as metalloids. Now, these are elements that have properties of both metals and non-metals. So they kind of go in the middle. They're neither a metal or, or a non-metal. They're somewhere in between. And the last item regarding the periodic table of elements is um, those noble gases. That's our group over here, these number 18 group. Um, these are our noble gases. Remember, they don't like anyone else. They don't like to react with anyone else. They don't like to be combined with anyone else. They like to be by themselves. Um, and so the thing to remember about them is that um, they're probably pretty difficult to find um, because if you have an element that doesn't react with anything else, you're going to have a hard time finding it. All right, the last item is radioactive decay. So radioactive atoms produce energy and particles from the nucleus, um, and the identity of the atoms changes because the number of the protons changes. It actually tries to change into a different element. So it's known as radioactive decay. The only thing I really want you to know about this is how to calculate it. So if I were to tell you um, that radioactive sample was decaying, then what you're going to do, if I say it has um, four half-lives, um, then you would calculate that by halving it four times. So if we start with a full atom, and then we take that, so we've got one atom, and then we're going to half it, so then we've got a half, then we half it again, we're going to get a fourth, and then if we half that again, we're going to have an eighth, and then if we were half it one more time, we would actually end up with 1 16th of the original atom, and that is how radioactive decay occurs, or is calculated. All right, this is the end of the review for atoms and elements. I'm wishing you the best of luck on the exam. It shouldn't be too hard. Remember to know all of the information that I have put forth in this podcast and make sure that you understand how to label an atom according to neutron, proton, nucleus, and electrons. Good luck.